Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. DRF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi, everyone. The feature race on Saturday at Santa Anita is the Grade 3 Santa Ana Stakes for Phillies and Mares at a mile and one quarter on turf. Before we start talking about the race, I want to just talk in general about some of the stakes races that we preview on this segment. And the truth of the matter is not every stakes race really lends itself to much wagering value. In fact, of the 33 graded stakes races this winter at Santa Anita, 16 of them have been won by the favorite. So a nearly 50% win rate by the favorite in graded stakes races. So my point is this, not every good race is a good betting opportunity. However, there might be an exception this weekend in the Santa Ana, because I like a filly who I do not expect to be favored. She's not a big reach, but I don't think that she's going to be favored. And we'll talk about her in just a minute. Let's, in the meantime, take a look at the field of nine fillies and mares going a mile and one quarter on grass. It's race number seven, $125,000 purse, the grade three Santa Ana stakes. And nine entered. I'm not convinced that all nine are going to run. Key flower number five is a question mark, whether she runs on Saturday or waits for the Royal Heroine in a couple of weeks. Some others are eligible to easier spots, but we have nine entrants and it basically boils down to, I believe, a three horse race between number four, closing remarks, number seven, Nage Blanche and number eight, going to Vegas, going to Vegas, trying to become the first horse ever to win consecutive run runnings, to win two runnings of the Santa Ana Stakes. She raced gate to wire last time out. We'll talk about her in just a minute. OK, it's a three horse race, in my opinion, closing remarks. Nage Blanche and Carpe Venum. Let's first talk about Nage Blanche, who was imported in from Europe in summer of 2020. And the idea was to try to win the grade one Del Mar Oaks. Well, she ran in the Del Mar Oaks. She just wasn't quite good enough. She finished fourth. And from then, it was just a question of what is Nage Blanche going to become in the United States? She's trained by Leonard Powell. And the answer is this. Nage Blanche has turned in to be arguably the most dominant long distance grass filly or mare in California. In fact, she's a three time grade three winner. And we're going to take a look at a couple of her most recent starts, talking about Nage Blanche, whose jockey is Juan Hernandez. And let's go ahead and take a look at the Astra Stakes last time out by Nage Blanche. January 17th, she did not have a great trip in this race. She was one to five, 30 cents on the dollar, actually. She was blocked into the lane, but Hernandez stayed cool and he knew what he had under him. And Nage Blanche would wear down the front runner disappearing act to get get up close home. It was six links back to third. And in her start before that, back in November at Del Mar, this is the red carpet. This time, Nash Blanche was on the lead. She can rally from behind. She can make the lead. She wants every bit of a mile and three eighths. I know the Santa Ana is only a mile and one quarter. This is the grade three red carpet at a mile and three eighths, two starts back. And that's luck on the far outside who made her run, Mage Nage Blanche run, but Nage Blanche, not only is she talented and, and can carry her speed, but she wants to beat you. In fact, she won that race by a head. Four starts back, she won by a half. Six starts back, she won by a nose. The challenge on Saturday for Nage Blanche is this. The Santa Ana Stakes is only a mile and one quarter, and all of her graded and or group stakes win. She's won four graded or group stakes. And all four of them, all four of those victories have been at a mile and three eighths or more. Nage Blanche did win a couple of lesser races at a mile and one quarter in Europe before arriving in the U.S. So it's not like she can't win at a mile and one quarter, but she would like a little bit more ground. I think she's a contender. Obviously, she should be one of the favorites, but she's not my top selection. 
Let's talk about the filly who I kind of expect. She's actually a mare. I expect that she will go favored. And I'm referring to number eight, going to Vegas. She's trained by Richie Baltus. Baltus has won the Santa Ana four consecutive years, including last year with going to Vegas. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Santa Ana from a year ago. And going to Vegas, she got loose on the lead and she was gone. This was March 2021. Umberto Rispoli was aboard for the first time and going to Vegas fell into the lead and she dominated. She won by nearly four lengths. This was the first graded stakes win for going to Vegas, who's turned out to be one heck of a claim. She was claimed a couple of years ago by Baltus and she has become not only was that a grade three win, but she would later go on to win the grade two John maybe down at Del Mar, the grade one Rodeo Drive last fall at Santa Anita. And she could have retired and sold for a good chunk of money at auction as a future broodmare, but they elected to keep her in training this year at age five and going to Vegas. She misfired in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. She was probably overmatched. The pace did her no favors. And so she was off from early November until early this month in the Buena Vista. And in her comeback race, going to Vegas, she did not win, but she ran very well. Let's take a look at the stretch run of the Buena Vista. Legs Galore wins this race on the front end. But going to Vegas at a distance that Baltus believed to probably be just a little too short for her. Turns out he was right because going to Vegas needed a little bit more ground to wear down legs galore. Legs galore, wire to wire, going to Vegas, eating up ground late. She came up a half length short and the Philly who fin finished third, we're going to talk about it in just a second. That was closing remarks. So going to Vegas stretches out from one mile to a mile and one quarter on Saturday. And this is the ideal distance for her. She has tactical speed. She doesn't require the lead, but she has enough tactical speed to create her own trip. She does not, she's not at the mercy of pace. She's not at the mercy of traffic because she can adapt due to her forwardly placed running style. And I kind of think that going to Vegas, I actually expect her to start as the favorite in the Santa Ana, regardless of what the morning, morning line says. Umberto Rispoli is back aboard. Flavian Pratt is in Dubai this weekend. So Rispoli back aboard going to Vegas as she tries to become the first two-time winner of the Santa Ana. Okay, I think she's going to be the favorite, and I'm picking against her. And I'm going to pick a filly who is long overdue for a graded stakes win. I'm talking about closing remarks. California bred four-year-old filly. In fact, she was recently named the champion California bred three-year-old filly of 2021. And closing remarks has been knocking on the door time and time again against graded stakes horses, but she hasn't quite broken through. She's the stakes winner in restricted stakes, but she has yet to win a graded stakes. Well, her last couple starts would suggest to me that she is ready for her first graded stakes win. She's a four-year-old trained by Carla Gaines. And let's take a look at an allowance race on January 17th at Santa Anita. The first time that jockey Joe Bravo rode her in a grass race. He rode her previously on dirt. She misfired. But this is Bravo and closing remarks on turf in a one other than. And this is the type of performance that can sometimes turn a horse around. Dropping into an easier spot, dominating the competition, winning with something left, in a, in a decisive performance. Now, it was a one other land allowance, so big deal. Could she reproduce her form against Graded Stakes Company? Well, yeah, she did. It was in the grade two Buena Vista. That's legs galore on the lead, going to Vegas, finishing second. But watch the stretch run of closing remarks on the far outside. She ran her final quarter mile in 22 and three. She finished fast. Bravo told her trainer, told Closing Remarks trainer after the race that if this was a mile and a 16th, I think that Closing Remarks wins. I don't know if it's true or not, but Bravo and Closing Remarks are going into the Santa Ana with plenty of confidence. She stretches from one mile to a mile and one quarter. And if she gets the right trip, and certainly she Bravo fits her well, she, this filly, Closing Remarks, has been ridden by other jockeys in the past, and she has not had the greatest of trips. But Bravo knows her, and he knows to keep her out of trouble. And if she delivers the same devastating stretch run 
going a mile and one quarter that she did last time out in the Buena Vista at one mile. I think that she can finally win a graded stakes race. Now, look, she's not going to be a huge price, but if, even if she's second choice in the three to one range, can we maybe hold out for seven to two? I don't know, but I'll settle for three to one on closing remarks. I think she is poised for a big season. I think she's poised for a minor upset in the Santa Ana stakes. I like closing remarks to win race seven on Saturday at Santa Anita. 